Hi, I'm here again. As you can see, I'm here again with the result of a spontaneous hair dye job, which was supposed to be an ombre, but the purple's not catching on that well, and I haven't bleached my hair, and I'm not planning to, because I'm growing it out. But this video is not about hair, it's about music, and it's about my top 13 bands or artists. So first, I will give a little description of how I put this list together. They are the bands and artists which uh, are simply genius to me. They hit right in the feels and uh, they are in the list for what they stand for as a music project, as a band, or as people. What they mean to express, what they do, what mood it sets you in, and all of that. It's a huge factor in judging music is obviously the complexity. Anyone can do da 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 da. But uh, there are some true geniuses who can make complex guitar solos and riffs and lyrics. So if I only did this by complexity, this would be full of metal, I guess. So now and then I listen to metal music and that's the most complex music, right? But I didn't want to make it this way. I wanted to really focus on myself and make it personal. So these are personally my top 13 that are close to my heart. Not because you analyze it, not because, of course, all of those elements, how they're put together, it uh, it creates the mood, the final mood. But uh, when you listen to music, you don't always just judge how the rhythm is set and how how many chords they are, there are. Of, of course, you're going to like something with a more complex melody and something with uh, six chords instead of three. But that's not what you think about. You don't think. You feel. I'm. I think I'm. Uh, I cannot avoid describing some of uh, some of what I like about the music technically, but still, it's about how I feel about it. And there are many more that didn't make the list. I listen to a whole lot of bands. I listen to a whole lot of genres. And they all probably fall under a huge umbrella of alternative or definitely definitely not mainstream and not pop music, although there's maybe some some of it that I like too, but but of course uh, some of those that didn't make it. But I still love them very much. Just because something is not on the list does not mean that I'm not Obsessed with it, maybe. So we've got the Dresden Dolls and and if you've seen my last concert vlog, yes, also Ghost. Ghosts are one of my favorites that didn't make the list simply because I don't have that much of a personal relationship with uh, the band, but still they are very high. The music is high quality. And the story that it also features, and all of that is very important. And then we got Lebanon, Lebanon, Hanover, and she passed away. Pinkton's Blue, Skinny Puppy, and other industrial music bands that I also dabble in now and then. All of that is also part of me, but. Uh, Here's what I have chosen. And note that it's, it's not in any particular order and that I'm, I'm not uh, ranking it. I'm, I'm not uh, doing a top 13 that would actually make something look better than the other. They're all on the same level for me because they're so different. You cannot, you cannot put them on Woo. 
you can't. So I've got the list open here and uh, the order is really chaotic. I really didn't bother sorting it out and anything like that. So first of we got what we've got here is London After Midnight. And what I love about London After Midnight is the connection of darkness, sex and politics in just one band that uses uses diverse music elements so yeah here i am commenting on the technical side of it although i don't even know that much of it i can barely play guitar but uh, that's the that's the impact that's the impact it makes and the lyrics are dark my favorite one is definitely uh, your best nightmare the poem at the end is something that literally gives me goosebumps. It's it's perfect. It's a perfect dark sex song, and they've got they've got this connection between all those uh, things that appeal to me in art, not in real life. Which sounds weird, but what I mean. What I mean that is that I really wouldn't want to die during sex, but it's art and London After Midnight is an artsy music project, which I simply love anytime. I can go back to it anytime, which is one of the criteria for the top 13 list. Next is a person and it's the... Patty Smith. As you know, I've got a review of her book, which I bought half a year ago and only recently read. And she is a poet, and I think everything she even thinks in her head is already poetry. And I don't usually like religious art for just for the reason that I went to a Christian school. I got curious, but uh, after two years I was fed up with it because it was everywhere. It was everywhere. I could see the mentality of the people, which is not very compatible with mine. But she, she's got some Christian lyrics and you can still see what she means by that. And everything she's written is, is powerful. And her band just gave it with beautiful music. I'm not sure uh, how it was later because it was the Patti Smith group and uh, when she returned to to her music career it was just Patti Smith so I really lost track of how much how much change there had been to the music group around her but but basically, the most of her is the lyrics and her voice. I like uh, just grabbing my guitar and sing along, singing along to some Patti Smith tunes. I think I think my voice is compatible with those songs, so it sounds nice. But it would never be like from her mouth because it's her art, and it's her poetry, and what she stands for in this world. She's this 70-year-old lady with a guitar that recites poetry, who, who reads Rimbaud and visits the graves of writers and poets and all of those things that she wrote about in her books. That's amazing to me. Number three, which is not number three, is Sonic Youth. I don't even, I don't even know how to describe their style, they're like noise, rock, something. But for me, they just have this huge 90s alternative vibe when you see their videos with... There are people with Nirvana shirts in their videos before it was even cool and even Kurt Cobain wore a Sonic Youth shirt. I've got a Sonic Youth shirt, but the print really disappointed me because the print... 
is fading. It's, it's flaking off in little chips. So you can't even wash it. Even though they've got a whole album named Washing Machine. The shirts are... Well, no, I'm sure it, it's a fake shirt. Because it was sold by some by some dumb chick store. Not sure, but I, I got it because I love a Sonic Youth. I think it's inspiring how they started. Uh, they didn't intend to make music. They just wanted to do something that uh, is is weirder, that actually protests about the laws of music itself. But there, even so, there were some emotions. If you if you got high, you could probably dance to it, and then the techniques came, and the guitar got good, and in the beginning of the 90s it was already a huge leap into something really great because it's it's very unconventional you've got all those humming and buzzing guitars and different guitar tunings so they were manipulating reality a bit i think with all of that and and also, like, every song is sung by a different member of the band. Except the drummer, obviously, but... But, so... There was... There was really something for me, and... For me, Sonic Youth is kind of the symbol of the 90s alternative culture. I don't even know why, but... You've got you've got Kim singing uh, the song "Shoot," for example, and it it hits you it hits you emotionally, and then you've got some lightweight songs, and all of them got great work be with the guitars because it's unconventional, and I can't. So let's go. To another one which is Cocktail Twins. And I'm not obsessed with everything they recorded. I think the newest stuff from Cocktail Twins was a bit boring. It sounded a bit too much like some 80s disco to me. Like some 80s wave which is not even cool but which is really mainstream 80s wave. But their old stuff, their old stuff is the shit. Their old stuff is a hundred percent goth darkness, with all uh, Fraser's uh, fairy singing and her soprano, with all that psychedelic music. It's like a dream. It's like a weird dream. And the first two albums are the darkest thing ever, even darker than the bands that are uh, generally deemed goth. Cock Dot Twins first two albums and then the third one is more of a most more of a really dada surreal something it's got more color to it when you listen to it but it is so weird, so dreamy and it's got this femininity with her with her high pitched uh, voice and all that she does in a uh, but you need to listen to that if you if you're into artsy music you have to listen to this i don't always get in the mood but when i do the mood is intense like i need me some cocktail twins right now and I do, and I'm like, oh, and walking through a dark forest, listening to this is the best. Try it out. Next is Bauhaus. It's really weird to say that because I wanted to avoid all of those very well-known mainstream bands. Everybody already knows them and everybody already knows what they are, how they came here what they mean to communities, but I didn't really even get into Bauhaus because it was the essential band for a subculture or anything. 
it was just that I was listening to Joy Division, which I also very love, and I think it didn't make the list. Uh, it didn't, but I also had some Joy Division obsession days. So and I was I was reading an interview with Ian Curtis, and uh, he was saying that he liked Bauhaus, and I was like, whoa, why is this band named same as uh, the uh, store in Czech Republic and probably Europe also, which I don't even think they they sell homeware or something like that. So that was weird to me. So I have have to check it out, and then I did, and I discovered that it sounded kind of punky, but the lyrics are poetical. You got songs like "The Parcher." It's a huge lyrical description of a guy getting to a door, and he's probably in some kind of psycho dream and everything. And the guitars are this weird, darkish mess, but it's still very punky. It's got this punky vibe to me, and it's gotten to a higher level. So that probably kind of reflects the way that uh, got evolved. Not necessarily really from punk, that... It may sound like, which is probably too simple, but you can see that in it, and I enjoy the 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 variety of uh, ways that they use their instruments. Like that sounds really weird for me. Like why didn't I say that while I was speaking about Sonic Youth? But when you listen to Bauhaus, you can always spot something that uh, you didn't hear before you don't notice this about the guitar line and then you do and about the lyrics kind of weird you know because Bauhaus is so well known everybody I feel like everybody has tried to listen and to get into Bauhaus but I really did and I get back to it every now and then. Uh huh. Let's continue. And uh, next is Soparaternus, which is a music project that I really, really have to be in the mood for. And when I do, it's usually when I'm at home. And then my mother's complaining that I'm listening to something so depressive and so negative and this is pure evil and, and she's she's a very sensitive person and she doesn't want that kind of negative vibes but I'm also a very sensitive person which is why I love these negative vi vibes and and I think that Anna Valny is just Someone from a whole different universe, man. It's like for for her, it's probably just some chilling next to a, a whole lot of synth machines, and she's just like, oh, have to get those feelings out. I have to get those feelings out, and she does. But what comes out of it, it's it's like an like an alien dark nightmare, and it's probably hard for sensitive people to listen to. But that's what I enjoy. Um, I've cried listening to Sopraternus songs. No wonder. There isn't much to say except. She's also very talented. She's made all of that and also like her aesthetic in the posters and in the photos that there are of her and all of that is it's just it's just her. And there's something very extraterrestrial. I think she's an Aquarius, which would fit perfectly. 
I'm not getting into astrology bullshit today, don't worry. I'm going on the next, uh, the Virgin Prunes. I've already spoken about them many times. And weirdly enough, the description will be similar because they're also quite extraterrestrial and quite dark. But in their own way, and I love the story behind the band that they used to be a group of friends before and that they, they had their own language and some of it is in their songs and the songs, some of them are criticizing society or, or whatnot and some of them are just really weird and you've got these these projects like what was it called oh my gosh I was just going to say it and then I forgot the one with the weird creepy sounds that goes all over and over and over and over and over again and it's not music it's just a something that is not about the music but about the concept and it's kind of scary because it it's got something similar with the music from from Lavender Town, but in a whole different way. And then you've got the album Heresy, which I've spoken about in a different video. That was all custom made for somebody who came up with the idea that uh, Virgin Prunes could make a whole album on Insanity, or what was it, and it's full of weird tracks in which there is actually the world's first shitty flute ever it's not on youtube but if you ever listen to the the song down the memory lane there is the first shitty flute ever and i was shocked when i discovered that and uh i've got tears in my eyes but don't worry i'm not crying this is what happens to me when i speak in when i read in a different language or when i just speak to too long i get tears in my eyes but they're not emotional tears i'm not sure why it is like that so i've spoken about the virgin prunes and i don't want to waste time because everything has been said and i'm sure that they are probably in my top three because the aesthetic of that music is what i live for Bam! dream disciples discovered them a year and a half ago or something and since then the essential music for any energetic activity because it's got uh, it's got so much energy when you listen to it this energetic guitar and this disco -y rhythm that makes it sound like a party song like a generic party song but you've got the guitars and you've got the lyrics and overall overall the dream disciples have always been doing a great job in music and it's something different it doesn't sound to me like the most uh, the most popular goth bands that everybody listens to and speaks about it's more on the rocky side of the spectrum but it also doesn't really sound to me like like usual goth rock it's is this energetic but darkish music project they've also done a cover of sweet dreams of major face i don't know why yeah but i love them and now we're coming on to some girl power which is jack off jail this grungy alternative band from i don't know where but just the uh, USA, I'll say I, I'm an ignorant European, and and uh, Jessica is a great person according to her social media. I follow her, 
And I think it's very important to fight for equality because not it's not just the laws which are also very shitty in America and in Africa and in some Asian countries and all, that, but also in the mind of the people. Because just because it's legal to be equal doesn't mean that the people view you as equal. So you're still getting shit for being a girl and not acting like girls used to. But also men get shit for for acting like like girls used to and that's not fair. And we've got rights to our bodies and all of that and... Uh, she kind of sings about that, but it's not very political lyrics that you would not enjoy listening to. It's also got emotions and it, uh, it's it got mental health involved. And some of the songs are more personal. And all of that is quite sensitive, but you've also got the screamings and the quite tough and a bit aggressive vibe to it and all of that Jack of Jill is just attitude in a nutshell also one of the bands that really remind me of the 90s which I have never experienced I don't know what it is with all those young people wanting to have been born earlier what that's supposed to mean. Maybe nowadays music is just shit, which I don't necessarily agree with. Let's move on to Björk. Björk is a genius and there's no way around it. She's an alien. She uh, came on a spaceship and she, she's been doing great, great music ever since. Her voice is something that you can not uh, imagine that would have been possible to have been born on this earth and everything that she's contributed to is just something like the way she sings all of those high-pitched tones it sound like like screaming but also just singing and it's also pure and everything is put together in a way that's really weird, but it sounds so great, and and you can you can see that this is this is not normal. This is something much higher from a different universe, also. And I've noticed how many things on this list are from a different universe, so. Am I just uh, really not human either? And that's why I don't enjoy Katy Perry and Justin Bieber. And I'd be lying with Billie Eilish. I haven't heard any, almost anything from her. But the voice, oh my gosh. I'm not speaking about that. So yeah. And you can see how incredibly talented Björk is. Because she sang since she was a child and you've got uh, the videos of her first band and she's there jumping around looking like a 10 year old still and just so very cute but energetic and and I think this is really how do you describe it she's so tender and energetic and cute and colorful and she's got this huge screaming potential inside she lets it out and puts all of that aggressive kind of industrial and kind of kind of more musical elements together oh oh I've already used the word industrial and I'm going to use it again because the next band I'm talking about is Einstein's and the Neubauten. And they were probably one of the first industrial bands. And 
this is proof of how industrial is also a huge umbrella because when we think uh, industrial, we think skinny puppy and all of that, which is also very tightly connected to goth subculture, but you also think about uh, industrial metal, industrial elements in Rammstein songs and you know, Nine Inch Nails are industrial, but but Einstein's and Neubauten started during the communist era, and uh, what they had is they literally sound like you pick up some pots from the kitchen and you pick up your forks and knives and scissors and everything that you've got on hand that is just a bit metally and you make weird sounds with them uh, <laughs> and you add some old rusty door sounds and that's what it is but together with the poetry that the lyrics are it's something very unique and very very enjoyable to me. My favorite album is Halbermensch. And then I love the newer stuff, which actually evolved into uh, actual music uh, that sounds more musicy. So you've got guitars and bass, and it's still got these uh, extraordinary sounds in it. I think this is one of my inspirations to learn German. It's going to take a long time because I don't want to abandon my target languages that I've already got. And that must be it. They're coming to Czechia this year. And I'm probably not going just because I think I'm spending too much money all the time. But I'd really love to. I'm sure this is not their last show and I want to see them live. And the next one is probably a band that I've listened the longest to from this list. And I discovered, I discovered them from a friend. That I'm no longer in contact with and is the Manic Street Preachers. I think they're politically they're a bit too left-wing for me but the music's amazing. They're talented musicians and the aesthetic that they had the several few several years when they started with Richie Edwards and the leopard print, leopard print fur coat and lipstick and Richie's cuts, uh, that was bad. He was a self-harmer and he was really sad and then he killed himself and hasn't been found since. But the lyrics he wrote are deep. And... Now the music is a bit more positive, and it's still got these alternative rock guitars, but they are quite diverse. They've evolved a lot, and they've changed a lot, and they also have some B-sides songs that didn't make it on the albums that also sound very different from the album stuff, but they sound different from each other and you've got political lyrics some of which uh, I quite agree with and some of which are maybe too radical I still don't understand why they've got the communist symbols in the background of the of the video to little baby nothing and all of that so I'm not a commie like them but I love them for some reason. And the last one is Fugazi, which was the new band of uh, the frontman of Minor Threat. And they're classified, I think, as post-hardcore or something. 
like post post old old punky hardcore they play a lot with the guitar riffs which are basically the the backbone of all of the music but what the band stands for is DIY don't support capitalism and be nice to each other and the lyrics are also very great I think that he's not very intelligible when he's singing but I've read all of the lyrics because I used to make translations on this Czech lyrics site so I've translated all of Fugazi songs and the lyrics were written very nicely and it goes straight to the point of what it wants to express although using so much metaphor you sometimes get lost in it but you get the essential vibe of what it's about and you know that uh, this is what they want to say and they're saying it using great music I'm not editing this video which is why I'm just speaking and improvising with what words I'm going to use which is why I've probably repeated myself for the last 36 minutes but it's not that easy to describe music but I, what I want to say is this is the top 13 top 13 bands and artists that are that are very close to my heart which I admire and that I really want you to check out my narcissistic heart thinks that you will not understand the genius of them but when I think about it in a more rational way I think there must be someone who likes it as much as me for the same reasons so I'm not going to be all there bragging like ha 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 I'm the one who gets it and you don't get it uh, oh I should stop I should really stop